Hello, my name is Ali, and today I'm going to talk to you all about React Fiber. So right now, the current version of React is React 15. And in React 15, we do not have React Fiber. But we are looking forward to React 16, which is an update that should be happening soon. And React Fiber is a huge part of React 16. A lot of people are really excited about it. A lot of people know Fiber is part of React 16, but don't really know what it is. So why is Fiber such a huge deal? Well, first off, because of Fiber, React is being completely rewritten. And it's being completely rewritten to support this new reconciler featuring task scheduling, which is React the current version does not use right now. So a lot of these words like reconciler and task scheduling might seem a little bit unfamiliar, so we're going to talk about those. So before we continue, I'd like to talk a little bit about the difference between the reconciler and the renderer that React uses. So the reconciler is what we think of as the virtual DOM. It goes through and compares differing trees to figure out what needs to be updated, and then it sends those changes to the renderer. The renderer, is, the renderer is what updates the app's UI, and this is great because different devices can share a reconciler while having different renders, meaning a lot of code does not need to be repeated. So this sounds great and all, but what's the problem? The reconciliation and rendering process is currently synchronous. So let me explain to you what that means a little bit. So I have a website that's trying to make a lot of updates. So I have this stack of updates that needs to be completed. And let's say I press a button before these updates have been made. A new item gets added to the stack, but this process can't execute until the stacks at the bottom are cleared. So in the case of pressing a button, this might only be an extra 100 milliseconds. We might notice this, but I want to talk a little bit about what it might look like with processes that are hogging up a bunch of CPU. So this is a video that has been floating around for a little bit. It was made to demonstrate exactly what Fiber does to make things a little bit more fluid in a web app. So in this example right here, um, you can see there's this triangle that's resizing. Inside of this triangle are all these circles. Within this circle are numbers. The numbers are incrementing by 1 until they reach 10, and then they go back to 0. There's over a also a mouse over effect. Um, in the version with the stack, you can see it's a little bit wonky, like the frames. There's a lot of delays between the frames. In the fiber version, this is a lot smoother. So let me talk about why that is. OK, so this is because we have both a high priority update and a low priority update going on. In the case of this triangle resizing, that is a high priority update because our eyes, in order for it to look like the resizing is a fluid motion, need to receive this update once every, it's about 0.16 milliseconds, where the case of the numbers changing, that's a low priority update, because if the number does not update right away, let's say it takes like an extra 10 milliseconds, we're not really going to notice that change. So right now we're going to talk about task scheduling, because task scheduling is how Fiber is going to accomplish this more fluid updating system. So pausing work is one of the features of Fiber. So here is an example of items and that are going to be sent to the DOM tree to update. So in the corner, I have um, the time remaining, 15 milliseconds, and then the next unit of work, which, as you can see, is the user's component within the host group. So with Fiber, the app is going to go down, reconcile the user's Fiber. And when I say the user's Fiber, that is what React considers a unit of work. A unit of work is referred to as a Fiber. So once that is updated, my app checks back to the top and says, hey, I have 10 milliseconds left to make updates that I need to make. And the next unit of work is a button. So it goes down, looks at the button, reconciles that, says, hey, I have five milliseconds left. Let me use that time to reconcile the item fiber. 
It does that, looks back up, says, oh no, time's up. There's zero milliseconds left, but I still have work to do. With fiber, it will go back, see if there's other work to do that needs to take priority, and then after that work is complete, it will come back and update the rest of this tree. So how does it do this? It does this through prioritizing work. So this I took directly from the React fiber code that will be part of the next update. So there are six different priority levels. There is no work, which means there's no work pending. That gets a zero. Synchronous priority, that's for controlled text inputs. Um, that gets a priority level of one. A task priority, it completes at the end of the current tick. That's a priority level of two. Animation priority, so that's an ad that needs to complete before the next time frame. So in that animation example within 6.16 milliseconds, that's a priority level of three. A high priority, an interaction that needs to complete pretty soon to make it feel responsive, that's a priority level of four. A low priority, it's data fetching or a result from updating stores, that's a priority level of five. And an off-screen priority, so this is something that won't be visible, but the work needs to be done in case it becomes visible, so that might be something that's hidden behind a tab or something lower on a page that you'd need to scroll to be able to see, and that gets a priority level of six. So let's say I have two items on my stack that need to be rendered. The first one comes in and it has a priority level of five. The next one comes in and it has a priority level of two. React will know to switch these so it can complete the item of work that has a higher, higher priority level first. Okay, now let's talk about reusing work. So on the left-hand side is the tree that has already been rendered to my DOM. On the right-hand side is a new tree where there are a few updates that need to be made. So what happens is Fiber will go through each of these nodes in my tree and compare them. So it goes down to users, sees that there are no updates that need to be made within users, so it just clones that item over. So it goes down again and sees, oh, there is an update that needs to be made to my button. It flags that, and then goes and compares everything else and flags everything that needs to be changed and just clones over the things that work can be used on. So it starts an effect list and adds all the items that have updates that need to be made and then goes and renders those items. So you might be thinking to yourself, wow, this is really great. Is Fiber ready yet? I know it's not, but I'm really anxious and just want it to be. Well, you're in luck because there's actually a website called isfiberready.com, which I've been checking fairly religiously for the last week and a half. I checked it on Tuesday night. The answer is no but 100% of unit tests are passing as of Tuesday night, which is really cool. And also, it's out to all of Facebook. So you guys have been using it on Facebook for the last few months. Um, so on Tuesday night, when I saw all the unit tests are passing, I kind of went through, oh, is this going to come out before my tech talk? Like, am I going to have to change a lot? So I started doing some research to try to find out when is Fiber coming out? When is React 15, or not 15, 16 coming out? And all I found was on Twitter a few tweets between users and Dan Abramoff, who is one of the guys behind React and Redux, and according to him, it should come out this summer within a month. So you might be thinking to yourselves, what does that mean for me as a developer? I have a lot of projects in React it shouldn't affect your projects in React. They are writing Fiber in a way where it will work with pre-existing apps. It might change the way a lot of your apps could be written in a future, but nothing should break as of right now. So thank you for listening. If you would like to learn more, um, I have links to a few resources that are really good for helping you learn more and dive deeper into Fiber.